Hi, my name is Lindsay Register and I play Sarah Gray in Valare. So one thing that was really pertinent to me as an actor in, in this particular project and additionally in, in most of the films and television series that I work on is the fact that you, when you're coming into the project, you may very well be shooting the end of the project at the beginning of the day. You are doing everything out of order. And that can be really tough, especially when there are some intense emotional highs and lows. I said move the car onto the tracks. Please, I need a I, minute. I don't remember the rules. No talking. That can be difficult because you may come in at the day and you're feeling really tired and, and you, you've just got to time it out so that your well is full for those moments of emotional intensity. Yeah, so from right there, hold up, just cheat up a little bit higher. On a good set, the crew will be letting you know how much time you have to prepare, how close you are to X shot, how close you are to Y shot, and, and they'll be working with you so that you know when the time comes you'll be ready. And then when you drop it, I just want to see where you're going to put it. Yeah, okay. Yep, and then you're going to look up, you know, towards the, uh, the train. Yep, okay. perfect. That's Something that I learned in college uh, came from a book called Audition. It was written by Michael Shirtliff, who is an acting theorist. And he talks about always looking for the conflict in a scene. Um, so Bob wants to find love, but he also really wants to hold on to his life as Bachelor, that kind of thing. Um, how do our desires conflict with one another? Because it creates a really interesting scenario. And in Valare, Sarah Gray has a desire to have this really thrilling, um, high adrenaline experience. Is it worth it? thousand dollars and a signature. But that also conflicts with the idea that we avoid pain and it's really maybe quite terrifying even though she knows that it's all a setup and so that creates a really interesting dynamic and it was challenging to explore um, because you have to think from an acting perspective how much do I let out at what moments um, you have to play to the audience, allowing them to think this, but really this needs to be going on in, inside. Action. <clears throat> Move it. I'm very excited about this. Curious as to how you'll do. Just... Don't forget the rules. Come on, get in the car. Move. Perfect. Something an acting teacher once told me was that as an actor, you never are the one to cut the scene. It's never up to you to stop the scene. You always, it's always, always, always your job to save the scene. So that means if your partner drops his line or the blocking starts to change, you are present in that moment, you're alive in that moment, and so you're not thinking as the actor, you're thinking as the character, and so you accept it, and you accept your circumstances, and you respond to them, because that's what we do as actors, we respond to circumstances, we react to things that are happening around us. Get in. As an actor, it's really important to come in to set um, in a relaxed and ready state. And sometimes when you're not relaxed and ready to start working, it's really easy to anticipate things that are coming to you in the scene. Um, so for instance, um, if you're searching for something and 
the character doesn't know where it is, you need to be fully doing, you need to be fully active and looking for that. It's not gonna be easy. You're not gonna have an intuition to go to that one spot. Um, sometimes we tend to have things come out a little too easy. The most amazing thing about being relaxed and ready is that you won't react until you have stimuli. And you need that stimuli in order to respond. But sometimes we can catch ourselves responding before we even have stimuli. And that is a sign that you need to go and take a few minutes and relax. Hi, my name is Alexander McPherson, and I play the gunman in Valari. Rule number one, you make any noise at all, I promise I will break every bone in your wealthy little body. A lot of times there will be, I mean, it's, you know, everybody says hurry up and wait, right? So there's down times and then there's times where you're flying through and then on a project like this, we shot 18 pages in a day. Something like that. I think around 18 pages. And and so we're flying. I mean, that's probably the most pages I've, I've ever shot in a day, I think. And uh, there is a balance of, of you know, I, I'm going with my guns. This is, this is what I think is right. This is what I think is good. But then there's also that a little bit of flexibility. You know, you have to be able to make those adjustments if what you're doing doesn't fit into the bigger picture. <sighs> I'm excited about this. I'm very curious as to how you'll do. Well, I'm excited about this. I'm very curious as to how you'll do. I don't forget the rules. No. Don't forget the rules. Right? Usually I kind of just try to go with the, the, the choice I feel the strongest with, kind of my, my safety choice first uh, when we're doing takes. Hopefully we'll have a few of them. Um, because you never know, we might only have one, and then you know, if you if you kind of messed around or whatever, then you're not, you won't be satisfied, and then and then you've you've kind of lost that opportunity. Action. Pull the car onto the tracks. Move the car onto the tracks. Please, I need a minute. Don't forget the rules. No talking. And once you've done that, then you can kind of play with things. And, and oftentimes you find that there's less tension, there's less pressure, rather, um, to hit the mark. Pull the car onto the tracks. I said move the car onto the tracks. Please, I need a minute. I don't remember the rules. No talking. So I think as it was written, it was the ending moment uh, in which the, everything kind of falls, falls apart in terms of you see behind the, the curtain and you realize, oh, this is just a charade and, and you know. Um, I, had, I had a couple of ideas and uh, Joel, the director, and I kind of talked about whether or not my character should drop the accent on the very last line to show that it had all been a ruse. House? Is there another scene in the train yard act? Negative. Is there a problem? You stop the train early. And and that was one decision that I, I wasn't I wasn't sure. I just didn't know. I didn't know whether it would be stronger to like keep the accent for the last piece and, and this is really who this guy is, or drop it and this has actually also been a facade. And I think each of them have um, some interesting connotations and interesting um, motivations behind them. House, is there another scene in the train yard act? Negative, no scenes added. We're showing you've stopped the train early and both participants are present. Is there a problem? Yeah, I think so. Rolling. And action. Stop! <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, my name is Cody Carwile, and I played Alex in Project Valer. What's going on? Ow! Wait. Coming into this uh, experience, um, I'm, I'm an actor and a writer as well, um, so it's it's kind of nice to um, see a project from start to finish. Quickly! Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that is shot out of sequence and you kind of have to be in the moment. You have to understand what came before and what came next. Uh, Lizzie, Lizzie, so I can get you a face. Okay. And have you, have you helping you out. What was interesting with Project Valer was uh, it, it was written completely linear. Um, but we were told by the director, Joel, that, um, that it was going to be out of sequence and it was going to be shuffled around and, and stuff like that. You have to take what's given you and make it your own as an actor. Um, they can give you Shakespearean lines, but you have to deliver it in a way that's natural and something that your character Action. would do. Stop! Is she, is she okay? Alex is in complete control. He knows exactly what he's got to do, what he's going to do, and how he's going to do it. Okay. But he has to pretend that he is a part of the game, but not a part of the game. So it's 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 juggling uh, a bunch of different layers. Ow! Stop! Stop it! Let's go! I want out of it! It was finding kind of the way he would say those things in order to convince uh, Christy, uh, convince her that that this is abnormal, that this doesn't happen in in the project and the thing that she was signed up for, um, and that th the stakes have to be elevated. Okay, look, I got an idea. Okay, but you're going to move as fast as you can. You got it? Got it? Okay, whatever. All right. Here we go, ready? Yes. We took, a, I think it was about an 18-page script um, that obviously is broken down into about five or six episodes here. Um, and we filmed that, I believe, in less than 12 hours, which is kind of a, a feat. Usually the rule of thumb is it's about an hour a page. Um, so the fact that we were able to complete pretty much all of that in, in eight hours or so was, was very, very interesting. Um, but that means that you have to be prepared. What was great about uh, Joel is he knew exactly what shots he wanted. Even the little scene with the um, with the the piece of tape blowing in the breeze as they walk into the car, like that was a shot that was mentioned early in the process um, that he wanted to get, and so you have to respect that. The the whole crew is coming in knowing exactly what they need and what they are going to do, and filming an 18-page script in eight hours, like you have to know precisely what you're what you're going to want. So out of respect, you have to come prepared uh, as an actor. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's definitely what everyone involved was trying to do, was trying to respect each other's time. Action. Stop! Is she, is she okay? Is she okay? Is she? My name is Christy Ostras, and I play the role of Sarah Thompson in Project Valeri. One of the most important things for me as an actor um, to remember is just simply listening. It's actually surprisingly harder than uh, you would think, especially when you're when you're planning on a certain performance or you get nervous. A lot of times you totally tune out what's in front of you, the other characters or the circumstances, and you're not able to uh, totally take it in and respond accordingly because often everything you need to get to really heightened emotions is right there in the text or with the other actors in front of you or sometimes it's simply listening to yourself, whether it's specific memories or something in the past. 
So I definitely say listening is one of the most important things that I've I've learned as an actor and I'm continually learning because it, it can be it can be hard, especially when you're tense and nervous, but um, it, it's best to get out of your own brain and into uh, just the mind of the character. Rolling. Yep. Action. Is she okay? Alex, is she okay? What are you doing? What was really interesting is the scene where we're locked up in the trunk. Um, we were told to just listen. And then they have a section here, and then we do, we have another section coming up. Okay, so after that, then it's more of you guys kind of listening. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, we'll just go to that part, and then we'll do the listening, <laughs> looking okay. again. He did talk about, um, yeah, you hear um, her getting picked up and, and different things like that, car sounds and stuff. So we weren't exactly sure what we were hearing, which in my opinion actually kind of added to that. Um, I really appreciated the fact that uh, Joel didn't give us too much. Action. <sighs> How do you know he's coming back? We gotta get out of here. Bring a little bit closer to your face. I think it was a little bit better that my imagination just had to make up all of these things that I'm hearing and seeing and experiencing um, without even fully knowing what it was. But it's it's interesting. I think some of the strongest moments that were in the in the trunk scene were the ones where we were just listening to what was happening, to what was happening with each other. Whatever we do, we have to do it quick. Okay. Do what quick? Find, find something. <laughs> Seeing the script uh, when I first read it, um, you know, being a secondary character inside a trunk um, may not seem like the most glamorous thing in the world. And yes, it was cramped and it was cold. Okay. It's like Tetris. We got this. Hold on. I can. Jeez. Here. Almost. There we go. <laughs> Almost. But it was actually, it was warmer inside the trunk, which was one plus about uh, being crammed in there. But um, I actually love getting the opportunity to have that kind of role. Um, a lot of times people will not want to work as hard as a secondary character or um, when you get something that's like kind of a little uncomfortable or not as fun, um, like being stuck in the back of a truck of a car. I think it's really important to remember whether you're a secondary character or you just have a tiny line or whatever, whatever role you play in the film, it's really important that you put your all into that. Uh, because even though you don't have as much screen time or not as much of your face as shown in the film, oftentimes it's the small roles that play like some of the most pivotal moments of the film. And so if you fail or if you have to or think like, oh, this doesn't matter that much or whatever, I mean, this is just like one day that I'm on the set. And, and if you kind of like brush it off as, as being unimportant, then it's your face on the screen, first of all. So you are going to look bad. But not only that, the entire project could fail. Cut, 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 cut. So that's why it's so important to put your all into everything you do, no matter how big or small it is, because it does have an effect on the film, um, and a lot of times a lot more of an effect than you may realize.